So I wanna show you the differences that have been made here. So take a look at GPT-40, right? GPT-40 had a 2.5 per million tokens cost, right? That's expensive in comparison to this, right? So it was literally twice as cheap to use DeepSeek when comparing to like 4.0, which is not a reasoning model. But then when you compare it to 03 mini, now we're price matching. Hi, my name is Dimitri Panici, and I'm a content creator, agency owner, and AI enthusiast. You're listening to the AI Agents Podcast, brought to you by Jotform, and featuring our very own CEO and founder, Ida Kintank. This is the show where artificial intelligence meets innovation, productivity, and the tools shaping the future of work. Enjoy the show. Why would you use DeepSeek now that ChatGPT 03 is out? And honestly, why would you use the ChatGPT Pro plan? These are the questions that we're going to be answering in this video and podcast of the AI Agents podcast. So as you probably saw a couple weeks ago, ChatGPT released OpenAI 03 Mini and 03 Mini High. Now, 03 Mini sounds like something similar to what you had with ChatGPT 01. And also, if you go and remember this, there was a 4.0 mini model. Now, mini was something that you were just used to having. It was the smaller version in regards to the computational power and comprehension and thinking capabilities of 4.0 and 01. However, with this new release, this ChatGPT 03 mini is the newest and most efficient model in the ChatGPT series. When you take a quick look at its competition math scores, it did better than 01, and it did significantly better than 01 Mini. And as you can see, there's 01 Mini, 01 Preview, and 01, and there's 01 Mini Low, 03 Mini Medium, and 03 Mini High. And that's exactly what you're gonna see inside of here too. You have 03 Mini and 03 Mini High. So the 03 Mini option, at its base is gonna be good for fast advanced reasoning and the O3 mini high is gonna be the most logical and in depth of the options. We'll scroll down here to HD level science questions and you'll see how it fares with the rest of the different models here. It's the smartest, it's the best, and it continues to be massively better at coding than it was previously, which as a lot of us know, this is where the huge gains are gonna happen because it's gonna compound on itself when the developers are going to be able to use the large language models to write better large language models, better computational capabilities. It's just crazy to me. So there's continued improvement across the board here. And I like that they're going to have multiple different reasoning levels. So you can have a different amount of like execution time and output and requirements are going to be different across different types of tasks. So that's totally good with me. And what's awesome is we've gotten the latency down significantly. As you can see, this is a little over 10,000 MS, and this is down to about 7,500 MS. So about 2,500 milliseconds less, which might seem minimal, but that's a pretty good jump. And the speed at which you experience these things is always gonna be important. So let's be real, all of you are gonna be happy with that. Now, who gets this plan? For the first time, you actually get a reasoning model available on the free plan. So while I do have the team plan, it's popping up there, not because I have the team plan, it's popping up there simply because you get it if you are anybody. And to me, that's nuts and amazing. If you're on that free plan, you simply are gonna select the reason option in the composer or regenerate a response to try the O3 mini model. So does O3 mini replace O1 mini? Yes, as you'll see inside of my ChatGPT account, there is no O1 Mini anymore and not even in the more model section. And that kind of tripped me up during the beginning of the recording of this video. And what's really great is right away, we're getting the O3 Mini model in the API. And just so you know, no, O3 Mini does not support vision or image inputs yet, but you can use that with O1, which was not the case prior. Now, when it comes to pricing, I did want to bring this up, especially with DeepSeek, because in the last video where we dived into DeepSeek, it's pretty simple. I was like, guys, the pricing is not even close, right? Like the, the 1 million tokens input and output prices were literally like 30x cheaper in uh, DeepSeek. So I want to show you the differences that have been made here. So take a look at GPT-40, right? GPT-40 had a 2.5 per million tokens cost, right? That's expensive in comparison to this, 
right? So it was literally twice as cheap to use DeepSeek when comparing to like 4.0, which is not a reasoning model. But then when you compare it to 03 Mini, now we're price matching. So if you take a look at the costs of all of these, right? It's a pretty significant price difference. So let's take a look at the output cost. So the output cost was $10, right? For a non-reasoning model. $2.19 was what it was costing for a deep reasoning model. And a general chat was $1.10. So as you can see, it was like a nine to 10 cost increase. That's not great. And I'm not saying nine to $10, which I guess it is kind of nine to $10, but that's be nine to 10 X the cost, which is not great. Now what we have is 03, which has significantly reduced the pricing of that to $4.40, which is still twice as much as what Deep Seek Reasoner is, but a 2X increase is a lot different than a 10X increase. So the pricing on this is better. So you don't really need to worry about Deep Seek, I don't think anymore. I think they're gonna get the price down again by the time like the full 03 model uh, comes out. And they always like continuously decrease the prices on these things as things get more efficient. So I would just stick with the model that I trust more, which is gonna be 03 with factual information and the like. Deep Seek came hot off the presses, but when it comes to ChatGPT 03, I really think that when I take a look at Mini High, it's going to do a good job. So let's just play around. And what I like to do to test models out is say, what are some prompt examples I could use to test out the abilities of ChatGPT's 03 Mini High model? A lot of times asking ChatGPT what you can ask it ends up being the best answer. So to effectively evaluate it, so yeah, let's give it something difficult, okay? Ooh, I always like the philosophical questions. I wanna see how it does in a short story as well and a logical puzzle, so let's let's try these out, okay? I'm gonna go back and forth between the two. So a couple things, by the way, you do have the ability to, for, with O3 Mini High, add a variety of different things. You can add images, you can search. What's interesting, you can add files. And what is interesting is inside of this, I can give it the sales deck maybe actually, and I could say, find some ways to integrate a more a value focused pitch deck for content services clients that focuses on how educational content reduces the costs of customer service agents and how online content drives growth for sales in SaaS. So what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the document. This is a much improved thing because you didn't have the search capabilities before. Now you have search and you have the ability to utilize the, the PDF that I added. And as you can see, it's doing a great job of really breaking it down in depth, going through everything I have. So for example, defining the two key value propositions, talks about the problem, how about how in a crowded SaaS market generating quality leads and nurturing prospects through sales funnels challenging and the solution is building a robust content engine. And then this as well for the customer support section also gives me the problem and solution. And I didn't tell it to give me the problem and solution format, but I know that's a really great way to showcase value for sales. So definitely want to recommend this for anybody trying to improve sales decks and that kind of stuff. And as you can see, it does have a reference to what was in the PDF too. Now, let's get back to asking it some fun questions, okay? So I wanna do a logical puzzle to see how it does. You have two ropes of uneven thickness that each take exactly one hour to burn. How can you measure 45 minutes using these ropes? And as you can see, it's gonna go through the logic right here. I don't have to show it as it's going, but I can if I want. I will say the response time is pretty quick, which for the 01 Mini and 01 in the first place were pretty slow. 01 Preview was really slow, if you guys recall that. So start both ropes simultaneously. After 30 minutes, rope A will have completely burned out because burning from both ends halves its total burn time. At the exact moment, light the other end of the rope B. In the final 15 minutes, in the final 15 minutes, Rope B now burning from both ends will take 15 more minutes to burn completely. In total, you've measured 30 minutes from rope A plus 15 minutes from rope B, which adds up to 45 minutes. Okay, I can see how that works out. That makes sense. So I find it interesting how it's working through logical problems and explaining it. 
for us. So let's try another one. I really like testing out the capabilities of these things. All right, let's do some math. Prove that the sum of the squares of any two sides of a right angled triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. It goes through and shows all that math that quickly. That's insane. And it's, I feel like the latency is way less. Like I'm not seeing like a weird lag as the text coming out. It's like smooth. They've probably added some nice CSS. So there's like a, a slow fade in of things too. It's not just like slapping it onto the screen. You guys know what I mean? Like it used to slap it onto the screen or like kind of swipe it in a harsh manner. And now I feel like it's not someone typing insanely fast. It's, it's fading onto the screen as it's going in, fading in. So it knows how to do this deep math. Now let's go back to one more test that I want to do, which is discuss the concept of free will in the context of determinism. This is a good question. Um, this guy's going to be logical. I hope let's see if it's going to properly get this one. So it's going to go through the whole logic here real quick. All right. So determinism, uh, core idea is determinism holds that every event basically is determined, right? Including human actions. It's inevitable. Nothing can really change it. So this is an argument between determinism and free will. Uh, I would fall on the, the free will side because even if we are in a, a deterministic society, like me trying to prove to you the fact that free will exists or even, you know, probably making my argument a little bit more staunchly, you can't prove to me that determinism is true by making an argument for determinism in the confines of determinism because you would be forced to believe or not believe in determinism it would kind of be irrespective of what i'm saying and even if you were convinced by what i was saying you were predetermined to be convinced by what i was saying and everything that led up to my situation as well uh, made this happen so the argument here though is that it's more logically consistent because if everything's a part of the natural world and we must conform to these laws then true randomness wouldn't exist which i can appreciate that uh, i just don't believe in uh naturalism so that's why i would more fall on this end but this does give a, a great breakdown of both sides and you can't really have like uh, ethics and responsibility in determinism if you're being logically consistent and this is a, a great point that it points out here and it even brings up quantum indeterminacy which is a major part of that so really cool stuff here definitely a smart cookie we showed you the stats we showed you the way that it functions we showed you that it has all of these capabilities like the temporary chat that obviously every one of the models has but it has uploading files photos searching the web taking screenshots all of these things are minor improvements that they're rolling out over all the models, but aren't necessarily capable or weren't necessarily capable for the O1 preview in the beginning. And even in O1 still, you can't search the internet, which is very intriguing to me that that's the case. But O1 mini high, you can still search, you can search the internet and it's allegedly a better reasoning model. And I will never know why they can't do that or maybe not never know. I will. And I don't know why you can't use the search in that capability, but I'm sure it'll get there. What I'm really excited about to see is when those different capabilities are available, not only just for us on the desktop app, but also ideally in the APIs, we can have images and that kind of stuff be supported. These reasoning models are going to give you long-winded responses. So if you're looking for more direct responses and you're looking for more day-to-day -day tasks, you're still gonna wanna use the 4.0 model. But this kind of makes me think that you don't need ChatGPT pro plan like, I appreciate ChatGPT. I use the team plan, right, which is $30 per user per month. I do bill it annually, so it's a little bit better. But this $200 a month, I just, I really don't see the justification at all anymore, especially when you have O3 Mini on the free plan, like a very high-end model here. You have O1 on here, which is going to get upgraded, I'm sure. Um, you have the pro model, I guess, here. You're going to have more Sora video generations. You have access to operator. Uh, we've talked about that before on this channel. You have unlimited access to advanced voice with higher limits for video and screen sharing. I just don't see the justification for the higher amount when you have O3 mini high on the free plan and you're getting more of it on the plus or the team plan and you're going to have more than enough use. So the fact that you get on the plus plan, some good things. And then if you get the team plan, you could seriously just pay for the team plan and only have three people, which will set you back 90 a month. And then you get also the higher messaging limits and you get access to the models with file uploads, data analysis, canvas projects, tasks, and search that you don't get all the time in the plus plan across everything. So it's like, I don't know why you'd go for the pro plan. I really don't see it. 
Like you go for the plus plan or you go a little bit higher for the team plan if you want a little bit more juice on specific, specific things. But even that's like less than half of what the pro plan cost is. And if you're just one operator, I mean, wait, right? Like it's not very good yet and it's going to have a high failure rate for a while. So I would wait a little bit of time until that's better. Overall, DeepSeek, ChatGPT Pro, not needed at the moment. I would try out the free plan and try out O3 Mini. And if you love it and want a higher plan, go for Plus or Team. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about what this new model can do for you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode of the AI Agents Podcast. Bye.